iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. This is thrilling to be able to bring a brand new musical and specifically this musical, How to Dance in Ohio to Broadway this season. It's life changing. I'm so thrilled about it. It's pretty surreal. Um, I mean, to be making a Broadway debut period, it's, it's, it, it feels uh, not quite real yet. It's just been a great journey. Really exciting to just kind of see all of this um, recognition and excitement around the piece and around our cast members and our creatives. So many people making Broadway debuts with such an important piece of work. And it just, I feel very honored to be a part of the process, um, to be in the room, which has just been incredible. And uh, it feels like everything, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. I'm really excited about making a Broadway debut alongside of so many other people that are making their Broadway debut. Like, it is just, there's so many Broadway debuts happening in this cast, and it, it, I am so grateful to be part of it. Oh my God, it's, um, no we're words. Excited. No Basically words. Basically, no words. Yeah. But you could just tell by our faces. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the biggest dream come true, and to do it with a show like this is the best thing in the world. And I, we're all family at this point now. We're a huge team, and, you know, Rebecca is my family. And so it, to do it together is truly the, the best gift. It's really surreal. Very it also surreal. feels very exciting to be a part of this season that yeah. has so many exciting new shows. I, and friends who are getting their Broadway debuts too. It feels really special. Yeah. It's, it, it feels, honestly, it feels like the reasonable next step for a show that is as good as this show. I always, I always tell people, I felt like such a jerk discussing this show with people because <laughs> I am very well aware of how uncommon it is for something to move to first reading to Broadway within two years. Like, that doesn't happen. And then people are asking me, like, really? You're going to move to New York now? Are you sure? Like, nothing ever happens that fast. And I'm just, you know, I'm Regina George. I'm like, I know, right? It's like it's it's really good, but we're also we, we also have enough understanding knowing that this is very very rare and it's yeah. awesome. But I literally I think I was telling people uh, a few weeks ago that after our first workshop, I, my brain was like, "See you in ten years," because that's how long people usually develop a show and then put it on Broadway. And it's just it's such a blessing and it's so magical and truly like this is the best show to make our Broadway debut. <laughs> I've been with the show since the first workshop, um, so it's so amazing to have seen all of the changes over the last two years um, and to meet new people like Christina and uh, make my Broadway debut with uh, so many people that I love and cherish as a part of this process. It feels so exhilarating and nerve-wracking and I'm just very excited. To be making my debut with a show that I feel is necessary and needed and that I feel um, first of all the music is also just beautiful but it's um, it feels like advocacy it feels like heartfelt in a way that people are gonna leave there um, rejoicing and thinking about things differently so it just feels like um, this is the perfect Broadway show to start with it feels so good. It feels very special and it feels right. Um, I am new to the show. I kind of met mostly everyone today, which is very exciting. Um, but I just really like resonated with the material. I think that this is going to be a very meaningful show to a lot of people. And I think every audience member coming in can find someone or something that they identify with in this show. Um, so it feels really special and exciting. Yeah, as the autistic creative consultant on the show, I want to second what everyone says. It feels surreal because we were like there, but also not there yet, similar to our Syracuse opening. It's like, huh. And also, like, I'm kind of living it. And so it's sometimes my friends and external people, like my mom and family, that's like, Eva, you're like working on a show that's going to Broadway. Like, can you believe that as someone who's like just emerging in her career and stuff like that? And so sometimes you just go through the motions and you don't realize how amazing it is until afterwards. But yeah, to open on a show that is like part of my lived experience and um, is really something extraordinary. Some some of this these the members of the team have been together uh, longer than I have been with this piece. 
Um, and so when I came in, there was a working knowledge of what this was. So me being able to lay eyes on it for the first time and being able to breathe in, in, in the piece um, had me crying all the time, first of all. But being able to watch them grow and also watch myself grow. Um, in the midst of, of all of this, the learning curve has been beautiful um, and necessary so that we can be the proper advocates. And, you know, we're also protectors of, the, of these people so that we can also protect them the way that they need to be protected and, and give them freedom when they need to, that freedom and having all of the conversations that truly matter about what it is to be human in this society. And one of my favorite parts about being part of the show is like we get to bring so much of ourselves to the piece and I feel like that's something that like we don't get with like any other piece you know and it also allows us a way to like be ourselves like both like on and off stage and I feel like that's really special. Yeah and we bring our like we bring our natural selves into into our characters because it because like it's, like Des said it feels natural, yeah. and uh, we eventually these characters are other counterparts of us, and that's like that's the best part of originating originating characters, yeah. especially for a new musical. I think my favorite part about being in the show is just knowing that this story is so much bigger than our cast or our creative team, but it's going to inspire so many young autistic people to pursue theater and to know that this is a space that they can live in and it's accessible to them. Um, I think being a part of this like original team is going to mean a lot to me for the rest of my career um, and I'm just so excited to see how this show grows over the next however long it runs and I'm, I, I'm yeah I'm so I'm pumped it's incredible. This show is, is such a beautiful uh, moment of showing how we must break through our boundaries uh, and it does it in such a joyful uh, thrilling and uplifting way I can't wait for audiences to come to this theater I'm sure not knowing what to expect and leave just changed you know for the better it's a it's a moment in our history that I think our country needs it I think we need to be reminded that that we care for each other and that we believe in each other as human beings and uh, and this show does that. I think my favorite part of this, I think I have two things. My favorite song in the show is a song called Waves and Wires that I just love. I remember the first time I heard it, the hair all over my body just stood up on end and I, I'd never really heard anything like it before and um, it's, it's stuck with me ever since and I thought I have to be a part of this. Um, and my favorite part of being in this show is all of the work that takes place outside of, of the show itself, not just the rehearsal space, but the conversations that are being started, the, the advocacy, the, uh, the activism aspect of this piece is my favorite part of being in this show. And of course, working with Darlicia. <laughs> uh, I play Mel, who uh, is the only character that we see that is uh, in the workforce um, as a disabled person, which I think is super important. Um, I have a lot of like connection to them and what they go through in the show, um, having that experience. And then also, um, they're like, they're a queer character and I'm a, I'm a queer actor and I had a lot of conversations with Rebecca the writer about that being an, an important part of this um, story to me and she was so amazing in all of our conversations about it. Um, and I think that a lot of like queer autistic people are really gonna connect with Mel um, in the way that I've really grown to connect with them. My character is an artist, just like myself. Um, yeah, so I do a lot of digital art. I do a little bit of fashion design like my character does. Uh, I have a, a lot of hobbies outside of work. <laughs> but yeah, and I actually picked up cosplay as, you know, as my character loves cosplay. So I actually picked that up myself after, you know, realizing, oh, my character loves this. Maybe I should try it. Like, you know, get do some method acting, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I just really enjoy that. Yeah. And uh, my, my character... My character is a comic book nerd, and um, he's also very, very comedic, 
and uh, I'm very funny in like my own way like, He's on very social funny. media. But there is one difference. He wants to become a licensed driver, but not me. <laughs> no, I'm good with the subways. <laughs> We have all like grown with these seven characters over the past two years. Um, we, I, I, I think with me specifically with Drew, he's very like um, process oriented. He likes to lay out like a situation and how he's gonna take steps or goals to like achieve that. And that's something that I have found myself to resonate a lot with. I think I resonate a lot with the way that Drew um, develops uh, romantic feelings um, for characters in the show and the way that his crush on Meredith ebbs and flows throughout the entire thing um, so that has really like brought me into him and I think just with autism in general and like our writers have been so good about making sure that like things feel real to us and things don't feel like put on us as opposed to like as opposed to how they do feel which is us like breathing through this and like growing with this script and this score um, so that is really just exciting to be able to like um, find our own voice in not only like playing these characters but the creation of them as well while still honoring the people that they're actually based on. It's been really exciting to create a musical that's based on a documentary because not only do you have the documentary as source material but you have the people who were in it uh, as like source material that can keep on giving because they're living their lives and they can you know t speak firsthand to things that if you want to know about them and so I know for me um, you know a, a, a part of the process that was really instrumental for me was going to Columbus and um, going to the center and meeting the clients who are featured in the documentary, meeting Dr. Amigo um, and meeting Ashley Amigo and I think that um, that has really been a, a, a key influence and, and a gift that keeps giving because anytime we have a question we can just ask. We were very lucky that Alexandra Shiva, who directed the documentary, and our original director, Hal Prince, both encouraged us to take creative license and really make the story our own original yeah. take. Yeah, he very much said from the beginning, do not put the documentary on stage. And, and, and so what I, I we often talk about the, the first draft, and it really felt like the emotional blueprint of what was to come. And so now that we had a cast and you know, making fine tuning those details and making the characters as specific as possible has been a treat to work on. I just remember reading the script and resonating. I mean, they're getting ready for their spring formal and just understanding what nerves, what those nerves are. Just like being a young adult is nerve wracking already. And just being like, oh wait, I can relate to a lot of this. Also listening to like what the parents' struggle was and their, and their own struggles. and. You know, it felt very universal, but also very specific. And I'm like, to me, those are the kind of things that I want to work with that are, that are um, very nuanced, but also that everybody can come in and leave with something and take something with them and relate to it. And it just feels like one of those pieces of theater that people are going to be talking about for a long time. And that's going to change the industry because I feel like the way that we are also... Um, preparing our space and the, the work that Ava's doing with accessibility needs, I feel like we can also share that with the rest of our industry to hopefully make rooms more accessible and um, more inclusive in that way. I think the, my favorite part is, you know, I mean the show on its own is an excellently written piece of musical theater, but it's really what happens behind the scenes. It's the community that we have cultivated um, and the producers and the creative team have worked really hard to cultivate and maintain. I hope that the lasting impact of our show will be, this is the right way to make theater. This is the right way to support other theater makers, other creative people. I think it's, it's just, it's a singular experience that I hope evolves into a universal one. Yeah, I was um, brought onto the project about two years ago from another um, team member who knew one of the producers. And they were looking for um, an autistic creative consultant to bring more autistic voices behind the stage in addition to cast authentically. And that was one of the key things that I knew that this team was already dedicated. In addition to casting authentically, which seems like a no-brainer, it really isn't in the entertainment industry of Broadway and screen. And to have consultants behind the stage to, like, uplift the team and help teach the team about accessibility and autism because that's not the cast's job that's like more my job to do is I knew they were dedicated to to looking at things in a new light um, and so I think that this show is going to as Maite said like and as Sammy said 
introduce people to a perspective that either really represents them as someone on the autism spectrum, disabled or part of a marginalized community that often hasn't seen themselves on stage or on screen, and then also anyone else, it will help them think about things differently and connect in many of our facets of the show. I am honored and I get really teary-eyed when I look at my fellow castmates and and know what they have in store, especially as uh, having a Broadway debut. I, I hope it's very evident for whoever come to see the show that we, we genuinely care and love each other and the team takes such good care of us and not just not just the autistic actors but also like neurotypical actors and just everyone we, we listen and we're so we're open to we're open for discussion and we never make assumption uh, uh, of, of people and even if we make because we understand that this is also the first time for everyone to do things on, a, on such a major scale, but also in a different way. So we're all always like learning from other people. We learn from our mistakes because we will make mistakes. And it just, I don't know, it's just a very nurturing and refreshing uh, experience. We start the show by saying, if you've met one autistic person, great, you've met one autistic person. So it's a, I think the show is a lot more about what unites us rather than what makes us different. And that's for sure something that audiences can hold on to. I'm so excited for, for audiences to get to know our core seven and uh, and you know what they have brought to the table. They're all making their Broadway debuts. Our swings are, I mean, our entire cast. I'm so excited for everyone to experience uh, these extraordinarily talented human beings. <laughs> wow, I'm really excited for audiences to like come out and see like, wow, how how did they do this? And I'm gonna be listening to the songs for like the rest of my life. But you know, it's just, we really want audiences to feel, to have a really great feeling about it once they step out of our stage door. It'll be like something they'll remember forever. I'm really excited for audience to see how diverse our cast is, you know, how autism manifests in so many different forms and forms that we can't even cover in our show because of how diverse the spectrum is, you know. And I feel like audiences will walk away with, you know, n learning something new. Yes. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz.